Hi, this is Dr. Alex Ye, and today we're going to be preparing teeth number 46 and 36 for crowns. We used an iPhone to prepare this video and it is shot in real time. Right now I am, uh, I've already started uh, preparing the fusel reduction. So we're using um, like an egg shaped diamond, coarse diamond. And um, you know, this is what I typically do first. I just re do the occlusal reduction. I'm not in the habit of using depth cuts. And uh, the crown preparations will be done with just two, two burrs. The burr that you just saw, the egg shaped diamond, and then uh, a shoulder diamond. So it's, a, it's like a one millimeter wide shoulder diamond. Uh, so after the occlusal reduction, I typically get started on the buckle, the mesial buckle angle, and then, and then we start preparing the margin on the mesial, and I'll swing around to the buckle side, and then we'll, we'll do the distal, and then finally the lingual side. During the preparation, I'm pretty focused on getting as close to the gingival margin as possible without touching or lacerating the gingiva and causing unnecessary bleeding. Um, this preparation ended up being a little bit more difficult than we anticipated because there was some decay that needed to be removed, um, some decay that extended subgingivally, so it did take a little bit longer. So we we're working, we're spending a little bit more time on the mesial side here because there, I've, I've found some decay. And so I'm removing the decay but also preparing the margin at the same time. This is an air-driven handpiece, um, just an old wolf handpiece. I think it's just a, it's, it's nothing special. So here I'm you can see I'm, I'm rounding out the, the uh, distal buckle line angle and we're continuing on to the distal side there. Again, the margin is subgingival due to decay. There's also existing um, composite filling material and of course you don't want your crown, ideally you don't want it to be resting on composite or any type of filling material, you want it to be resting on decay free tooth structure. I like the shoulder style um, diamonds which are essentially cylinders, cylindrical, um, because it, it makes a nice distinct margin and um, you can get uh, you can get these shoulder type diamonds in uh, fairly narrow dia diameters this one I believe is just over one millimeter it could be like one and a quarter millimeters in diameter just slightly larger than a 557 carbide burr the This is the uh, the most used diamond I I, uh, I have for um, crown preparations. This this and different lengths of this same type of bar. I believe the burr number. If you're interested in ordering it, is um, there's three of them I use. There's the 835010, 836010, which I think this is the 836 or 835, and then there's the 837010. And the green stripe indicates that it's the coarse diamond. I only use coarse, or it could be, it could even be the extra coarse. So 
So I've already prepared the, uh, I've prepared all the all the margins already. Like right now I'm just kind of being nitpicky and I'm round it, rounding out all the line angles, like the blue line angles, making sure there's no sharp edges, right? Because th these are going to be um, force and fuses or pony crowns. So you do not want um, sharp edges or line angles, which will create stress, uh, points of stress and increase the risk of fracture, premature fracture of the uh, of the crown under a cruisal load. Right now I'm just checking. I like to dry the, uh, the margins and just check for little little steps or divots or rough spots. My, I like to have, um, I like to make things easier for the lab and just make the, make the margin as continuous and smooth as possible without any sharp steps or, or lips or ski jumps they like to call them. So you can see that uh, the distal margin is fairly subgingival. And if I recall, it's because there is a deep um, existing composite filling that we have to get uh, and get under in terms of resting the margin on tooth structure. I'm just doing some secondary reduction, smoothing out any corners. And we're just about done this preparation. So we're checking the occlusal clearance. Which there's plenty of occlusal clearance there. Just confirming everything's all good. So that's about seven minutes um, for that preparation. This is the impression you can see where we are spending a lot of time just correcting the, uh, the margin. It's um, fairly subgingival on the distal side. And on the mesial side, there was decay. And so here's another picture of it from a different angle. All right, so now we are preparing the 3.6, tooth number 3.6. So same thing, um, doing our occlusal reduction with the egg-shaped diamond. I always start cutting with whatever surface closest to me. So in this case, I'm cutting the lingual, occlusal lingual surface first, and then I move on to the buckle, which is which I'm doing right now. And then I, I do like a secondary reduction right there. Try not to switch between burrs. So like, I'm done with that egg-shaped diamond now. I will not use that again. Um, or it's unlikely I'll be using that again. And maybe until like I'm, I'm done, most of the crown prep I might break it out again, but switching burrs and, you know, suctioning or like letting the patient close their mouth and things like that. The, takes up a little bit of time so uh, I try to be as efficient as efficient as I can be so now I'm back to the uh, shoulder style cylindrical diamond burr and because the lingual surface is closest to me I start with that um, you'll notice on the 4.6 I started on the buckle side because it, it it was closest to me. Now I'm just on the on the label side. So you'll you'll see like my mirror on this side, my mirror is holding the tongue back, whereas on the other side, on the on the when I was preparing the four six, my mirror was being used to hold the, the cheek. Right. So the assistant is responsible for the soft tissue closest to them and. As the doctor, you're responsible for looking after the soft tissue 
closest to you. In this case, that would be the tongue. So I'm retracting the tongue, my assistant's retracting the lip, and vice versa for the opposite side on 4-6. So I, I don't need the mirror anymore because right now my, the cutting surfaces of my burr are completely hidden by the tooth. So the, if the patient decides to swallow or shoot their tongue out unexpectedly, the tongue will not be injured because the burr is completely on the other side. And my assistant's doing a good job of retracting. So right now, that, that finger on the top lip, that's my finger. That's, that's my left finger. So I've dropped my mirror and I'm using, I'm using my finger just to retract the lip because right now I'm, I'm preparing the buckle side and the lip was in my way in my, my line of sight. So I'm just kind of gently moving it or retracting it slightly so I can see the entire, entire buckle surface. So I've already prepared that margin. Now I'm just rounding out the the, uh, the the line angles there, doing a little bit of secondary reduction. What people find most challenging with um, crown preparations, I think, it, are the um, uh, the 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 line angles which connect surfaces. So, like the the distal buckle or the distal lingual line angles typically are the most difficult because they're difficult to see. Um, so it's just a matter of either moving your head or the patient's head so that you can see that surface. And then there's always there there might be some instances where you, where you're just you're you're cutting with just the feel, right? So. A lot of times when you, when, you, when you do this enough times, you can just kind of feel where the margin is and, and where it's not. So here I'm just using my mirror, just making sure I'm, I'm just double checking, drying the margin. Like you have to dry the tooth and dry the margin just to see and make sure there's no like, you know, defects, right? Again, we have subgingival preparation on the distal and mesial margins, which makes things way more difficult, right? Because you're trying to stay on tooth structure, you're trying not to touch the gingiva, but the deeper it gets, the more likely you're gonna have some hemorrhaging issues, right? In this case, we've got some, a little bit of minor bleeding of the gums. Of course the patient's very well anesthetized, she didn't feel anything. I don't recall what the reason is for the deeper margins. I believe it was because there were deeper, deeper composite fillings and uh, so the margin had to uh, extend slightly deeper then the filling material so the crown can rest on um, non-decay tooth structure. So this is what I'm talking about, like the distal lingual line angle there, right? It's difficult to see. I'm using kind of like a combination of sight and feel. And now I'm just kind of being nitpicky. I'm just kind of, anyways, that was it. So the preparation took about seven minutes or so, just like the 4-6. In terms of the impressions, like you can see here, it, it's obvious that there is uh, subgingival margins and the, uh, the margin is uh, somewhat undulated, but still quite smooth. Um, it's gonna be easy for the lab to kind of navigate those margins. Um, we're using a light body and heavy body combination for the impression. Um, I encourage you to 
use the light body um, and then gently blow air with the air water syringe, just air, just to force the light body onto the uh, surface of the crown preparation, as well as um, most importantly, the margin itself. Um, you know, I've been using that technique for a really long time. Um, and uh, when you blow air and, and force the uh, light body um, onto all the surfaces, you, you know, you get very few bubbles or defects and I don't even use uh, retraction cord like 99% of the time I don't use retraction cord even with subgingival preparations I just um, blow air make sure that the, the preparation is super dry and then use the light body and quickly blow air um, carefully so that the light body can actually get into all the nooks and crannies and and uh, you know, the uh, subgingival spaces. I also put uh, light body on the occlusal surfaces of the um, adjacent teeth so we can capture the, uh, the occlusal um, uh, details uh, because obviously occlusion is important. Okay, that's it. So hopefully you learned a little something and um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, Feel free to visit our website, smilesdownalgroup.com. And uh, if you do need crowns or um, fillings, any type of basic restoration, um, Smiles Dental Group is more than happy to accommodate you and or anyone you may want to refer to us. And we do appreciate those referrals. So please like and subscribe to our channel and this video. And uh, we will see you soon.